I'm Mike DeLuca. Welcome to this rare In the Trenches look at the craft of screenwriting. Today I'm joined by my good friend Scott Rosenberg, whose career spans every genre, comedy, action, horror. His credits include the scripts for Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead, High Fidelity, Con Air, and Beautiful Girls. It's a pleasure to have you, Scott. Thanks for being nice here. Nice to see you, Mike. When did you first feel like you had what it takes to be a screenwriter? Did you have a moment where suddenly the confidence was there and you felt like you had broken through? And it was the one area, I mean, it wasn't the one area, but it was the one area like I knew. Like I sort of fake it with everything else from, you know, my driving skills to my lovemaking skills. That I'm not so great at everything, but, but you know, I pretend that I am. But at writing, I just always knew that I, I always knew that I, I could do it, you know, the, the, the fiction. Mm -hmm. And then it, just moving it over to the screenplay. And by the way, the other thing is you read other stuff. Right. And it's especially when you first when you first arrive here and you're getting all these screenplays and you're like, oh, I can I can do better than this. I can do that. Yeah, and then you're 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 totally stoked. And then you read like Lethal Weapon or Usual Suspects, and they're like, ooh, not so much. Right. You know. So so it's it's that I always say that there's there's no if I had to do it all over again, I would never have read any scripts because there's no uh, the, the, all, these people that come out and they, and they 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 immediately get a job as like a reader for like somebody like you. I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. I mean, that's always my, my sort of boilerplate advice because... Keep it to yourself because I need readers. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, A, if the scripts are rotten, which most of them are, you're totally annoyed because they somehow got to your boss, to you, mm -hmm. and, 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 and how did they? And then if they're brilliant, you're completely intimidated, and, and, and so, so it's like, it's a lose-lose situation. Had you written many unproduced specs before the first one got produced? I wrote exactly 10 scripts before I sold my first one, and then I sold my first one, and then it was my 14th that was Things to Do in Denver and You're Dead, not counting a couple of Tales from the Crips okay. that we did. But yes, yeah, so it was 14 scripts. That's why, you know, invariably, as I'm sure you do, I get those calls. My mother met your mother at a wedding. <laughs> I'm 22 years old, and I just graduated from Cornell. And I'm coming out there. I wrote a script, and uh, will you read it? Right. And I'm always like, how many have you written? And they were like, and they're like, uh, this is my first. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'll read it, dude, but I guarantee it's going to blow. Right. Because you're just learning. There's no way. I mean, I don't know how anybody can write. I mean, I go back and look at my the first 10, right. and they're horrible. I mean, there are little moments that are really great, which I cannibalize and put in Armageddon. Right. You know, <laughs> or you, know, you always can appropriate, put them somewhere. How did you get familiar with the structure of a screenplay? I went to USC, UCLA, and NYU, like really quickly. Um, I never graduated from any of them. Just kind of audited, or really? No, enrolled? no, I went. Okay. I went, I went to, U I got into USC. Basically, I was here, I was here for like five years. I had no money. I was working every shit job. And I said, you know what, it's so, it was so like, all of a sudden, it was very demeaning. Not demeaning, but I felt like every single person was trying to do what I was trying to do. It's the only thing you can do by yourself. You right. can't sort of act alone in a room, or you can't direct alone in a room. I right. mean, you can, but you're <laughs> crazy. Your way, yeah. Right. So, so um, I, I was just feeling like I wasn't feeling special at all. So I was like, you know what, I'll apply to one of these. At least I'll be a, I'll be a guy driving a truck who's also going to USC film school. Right. So I applied and I got in. And the one class that was amazing, unfortunately he's no longer with us, is, is it was this taught by this guy called Frank Danielle, who actually started the Columbia Film School with Milos Forman okay. back in the day. Frank Danielle? Frank Danielle. Mm -hmm. And he taught this course that he was this, he looked like Santa Claus. He was this lovely old, what's Milos Forman, Czech? Czech, yes, yeah, I believe so. He was so. also Czech. And he taught this course, and it's going to sound like it's the most boring course in the world, but everything I learned about structure, which is arguably not <laughs> much, was, I learned in one semester. He would show a movie, some like it hot, Sunset Boulevard, Casablanca. You'd watch it, big lecture hall. And then he'd show it again with the volume down really low. And he would basically tell you every. It was oh, like, interesting. What we get on DVD commentary, he was doing live. He with was doing these live. classic films. Exactly. And it was all, that's where we learned about planting and payoffs and like all these things. And, 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 and it was unbelievable. And I mean, I, the, the truth of the matter is, I mean, I think you can either write dialogue or you can't. I don't think anybody can learn it. Um, Were you always good at it? And I, it yeah, I could do that. Um, but you can learn, you can learn structure. You may not be great at it, right. um, but you can learn it. And I, I completely learned it, you know, in that in that class. And you worked on a lot of big, you know, action uh, pictures, uh, and even in your pictures that are just about people. They're very cinematic. Do you, do you think in visuals or pictures before you write? Does it, do, the, do the thoughts come to you in, in visual ways? Um, I, I'm, I really, 
I mean, I, th I think I, th yes, I do, but at the same time, my, I, the stuff that I'm most interested, it's all about the people, and it's all about what they say. I'm, I'm a big proponent of the plot is for pussies uh, school of, of thinking, you know. Um, I've gotten better at it. Uh, I love a good story and a good idea as much as the next guy, but at the end of the day, what's most important to me, my way in initially, is who are these guys and what do they want. Okay, you know? so you start from a character standpoint. Absolutely, yeah. Do you, uh, do you outline before you, you go to draft? Uh-huh. Basically, the, 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 the drill is come up with an idea um, and immediately figure out who, who is who people it, who's, who, who's the main character, who's, yeah. and then like, live with that for, for, like drive with it, and it's the first thing I think about when I wake up, and it's the first thing I think about when I go to sleep, and you take it to dinner, you just kind of marinate it. Right. And this is the cast of characters that and are the, coming together in your head. The cast of head. characters and the story and okay. where it's going to go, and I love coming up with sort of what's the opening scene, you know, what is mm -hmm. that opening scene? Um, and I always, it's really, I always say, you know, what separates the men from the boys, because everybody can write the first 25 pages right. of a screenplay, and I think everybody can write the last 20. You know, it's, it's page 71, when you're mired in the muck, which it makes perfect sense. When you go to the movies, it's always like around an hour and five minutes where you're like looking at your watch, and you're right. like, um, but I just spend a lot of time with it, and that can go on from, you know, six to eight weeks, whatever, and then at a certain point, when I feel ready, I'll sit down, legal pad, and I'll just write one through... 70 and just do the single line a single line per scene single line yeah just not not tremendously detailed just knowing right. you know jimmy walks into the restaurant da -da -da -da, he meets him, and then knowing where the acts end basically but and then, and then that list is constantly being reworked and then at a certain point you sit down and you start writing and what's great about the list is you i check off each scene as i go with a different pen from the one used before so you get that sort of sense of completion like ooh, i wrote six scenes today what's the most difficult part of writing a screenplay for you it's the it's the 110 page thing oh the, being boxed into mm -hmm. that yeah because every first draft is always 175 pages my rule is always if i finish a script and this is not i'm talking more about a spec there's five people that i give it to and and um i will take a few weeks off while they're reading it and think about other things and then start getting their notes. Right. And it, it's always good if like, because they're, they're three very, they're five very different people and um, if they all have, if some of them have the same, you know, it's that if three people tell you you're drunk, lie down thing, you know, right. like, okay, well, I guess they're right. Um, but then, but that, 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 that starting to cut is, once you had like some distance from it, you go back and, it's actually one of the most satisfying things. It's like, oh my God, that scene, I thought I needed that scene so much. How it's long so you, much better without that scene. How long do you put it down for before you would come back to it and, and start pruning? Usually at least a week. Okay. It's, it's hard because it's there and you want to get at it and you can't really focus on anything else until you have. And it, did that process for you evolve over time? The, I write my first draft, I put it down for a week, come back to it. Did that, was that trial and error? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because I would, you, you just, when it's so fresh, you're so wed to it and you can't, like, I, I just wrote that. I'm not getting rid of that right. scene. You so know? you get some feedback from kind of family and friends uh -huh. and then go back to it. Then go back and look at How it. How many yeah. times would you hit up with like an uh, internal first draft and prune it before you go out with it? I will never give anybody 170 pages. Sure. It, it'll, you know, right. it tops 130. I just wouldn't, you know. So you do your process until I you get to process. a length you yeah. feel like, okay, how do you know when to stop? You, you just know, you just say, you know what, I can't cut anymore. Right. I, I, I really can't. And the truth of the matter is, these movies, they should, unless you're doing, you know, Saving Private Ryan or, or um, you know, 1900 or something, right. then they, they, they shouldn't be 170 pages. Especially if it's a comedy or like a romantic <laughs> comedy or right. a horror movie or something like that. Right. Um, but, so there is obviously something wrong. Mm -hmm. There is a fatal error if, if, you're, if you're, you know, if Liar Liar is 170 pages, sure. you know? Is there anything in your life that most prepared you to be a screenwriter? Being a Red Sox fan. Being a Red Sox fan, Hope Springs Eternal. Hope Springs Eternal, yeah, right. because every time you write Fade In, you think this time they're not going to fuck it up. Right, like it's the beginning of the season. It's, it's going to be great. And, right. and How do you continue now that they've won a world championship? Like, it's very difficult. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Yeah, but that's, why I'm, that's why I'm going into television. Right. 